All right, we're talking a little bit about the uh, upgrade to a one wire alternator. We're referring to the Bullnose Ford trucks. This is an 82 F250. It's got a 351 Windsor. And I actually had to upgrade my alternator because I had the 70 amp, which is this one you see here. Uh, the 70 amp put in there and uh, of course the external regulator that you see here and add in the electric fan I think is what did it in <clears throat> um, so I scoured the internet for quite some time trying to find out some more information on changing over to the internal internally regulated one wire alternator setup so this is a Tough Stuff 140 amp um, one wire alternator. And on this model, my external regulator, the voltage regulator was mounted and it does look like a little bit of a mess right now because I haven't cleaned it up yet. But um, basically right here on that inner fender well. And you'll recognize this blue plug right here is what plugs into it. So it would be like so. All right. And every bit of information that I was finding on the internet was saying, oh, you know, all you've got to do is just simply run your positive lead from your battery terminal on the alternator over to my starter solenoid or to the battery. So I took it to the starter solenoid and you can see the shiny new red wire. I ended up buying a five foot one and kind of regret that and I just haven't chopped it down yet. <clears throat> but anyways, um, so I removed the old harness altogether and I was trying to think how in the world am I supposed to modify this harness in order to get power to my ignition to the rest of my truck. So I had power here and here the battery and there the alternator but I did not have it anywhere else. Okay, that's a lie. My fan would have had power, but it's got a thermostat to control it on and off. All right. So, what I found is, number one, I looked at tons of wiring diagrams, and the only ones that I was able to find did not match up when it came to wire colors and... So they were vaguely on the same page when it came to, you know, the fact that there was wires running through this plug right here and going forward. But again, the colors were, were off. So I really didn't trust it. So I took my harness, uh, which again, it goes from here, includes that plug that takes the power through the firewall. Uh, back there. Everything's black, so hard to see. And also was running these two right here. So this one to the battery terminal. And then this one uh, for the field terminal. You can see also that I do have an externally mounted ground wire because why not? I didn't necessarily trust, especially considering that I had painted all my mounting hardware. Uh, so I wasn't trying to sand it off or burnish it to get a good ground point. Anyways, so these wires ran over here. That was the extent of it, right? But within this, there are fusible links. Uh, which basically it's like a solid wire with a 
a weak spot in it of sorts, uh, engineered weak spot. So it's kind of like a fuse or a, or a, a circuit breaker, except it's just a solid wire. Anyways, what I did, instead of uh, just taking a wild stab at it, I grabbed my meter and came up with this. So, uh, let's see. We got the connector, and then I just, these are probably not correct pin numbers because I didn't see pin number one marked, but this is the uh, the way I did it. I just said one, two, three, and four, and then that's how they're listed here. There's my voltage regulator uh, with the field, the starter, stator, I don't know what it stands for. And then uh, this the A terminal, and where those came from is when you look at your voltage regulator it goes like this F S A and then I for the ignition or yeah which people hook up uh, the dummy light to say when your alternator is charging or not um, mine was not in use ever from the looks of it so no big deal right and then this is the alternator. So it had the field and the battery terminals and of course the ground, which doesn't matter. Uh, so as far as the harness goes, the battery lead, which was this guy, the battery lead had good continuity with um, pins two, three, and four on this connector. And then pin one only went to the S uh, lug of that voltage regulator. Now, considering that I don't have to be concerned with what the voltage regulator actually does because now my alternator is cleaning up that power and regulating that voltage, um, not concerned with this piece. So all you actually have to do in order to install a one wire alternator on this type setup is okay what i did not mention is that this battery uh, line also goes directly to the starter solenoid on this lug with your battery where your battery connects all right, so between that and those three pins, it's sending all the power uh, through this harness right here, sending it all to the, uh, to the dash. All right, so you disconnect your voltage regulator. You disconnect those two wires from the old alternator. Uh, temporarily, I put some electrical tape over them just so they don't accidentally touch anything else and mess me up. And you leave that guy plugged in. You leave your uh, that blue wire that you see coming out. And then it goes into the old wiring and into that wire harness. Uh, that's because I burned up uh, the fuse link uh, at one point prior to this. Anyway. So through this terminal is how the power is being fed through this harness into those wires and into your dash. And it is safe. I have uh, already checked it out. It, again, I spent a few days before I actually uh, did this because I wanted to ensure that I was not going to be burning anything up. So... Uh, I hope that this video helps you. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment below and uh, have fun with it.